Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa with Lisa Kip and Quilts and today we are making something so functional for your kitchen. Okay, it's really cute. It's a lot of fun to make. It doesn't take that long and it is super functional. So let me just give you a quick demonstration. Today we're making pan protectors. I should have called them uh, mixing bowl noise reducers. <laughs> because <laughs> that's how I'm using them. So today we are making these, right? The small one is a free pattern. You can grab the free pattern for the small one. This is a nine inch down in the description box below. If you want the full pattern, it comes with three sizes. So you have a nine inch, a 13 inch, which is like a medium, and a large one that is 16 inches. Let me just give you a quick little demonstration. We live in an older house. By older, it's over 100 years old. Original hardwood floors, and she makes a little noise in the kitchen. We have an island with two shelves, and on the middle island, or the middle shelf, is where I like to store things that I use every single day, which includes a stack of mixing bowls. You can already start to hear them. And so when I walk through my kitchen, this is what I hear. It is so annoying <laughs> for someone who likes peace and serenity. And I like to enjoy my time while I'm prepping a meal or whatever I'm doing in the kitchen. That noise is aggravating. So, uh, at Christmas time, my son gave me a whole big new uh, set of pans and pots, and it came with measuring cups and a cutting board and some chopping knives. It was awesome, but it also came with some pan protectors. So a pan protector, if you want to stack your pans, uh, goes in between the pans so you can save space, stack your pans, but you're not going to scratch the coating on the inside, right? When I saw those, I was like, I bet you those would work perfectly instead of in my pans, in my bowls, but most of them were too small. So I went to work and I designed some. So we're gonna go from this. My, big, my biggest mixing bowl is in the dishwasher, so I couldn't use that, but the 16 inch fits inside my biggest mixing bowl, which is bigger than this one. But we're gonna use these bowls because <laughs> I have them clean. We're gonna put this right inside. See how it just curves up just like that? Isn't that so cute? It has a hexy, cause we're quilters. <laughs> so that one goes inside there. The middle one can go here. And the smallest one can go here like that. And now listen, quietness. No more aggravating noise while I'm trying to enjoy making a meal. <laughs> See what a huge difference that makes? Now, um, I didn't fussy put them in there so that they're even, but there you go. That's what it looks like from the outside, right? Nice and quiet. Do you want to make some? Make sure you grab the patterns down be below. Again, the nine inch is free. So if you have a bunch of small mixing bowls and you just want to make the small one, Perfect. If you want all three sizes, grab the pattern. That link is down below too. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to show you, we're going to demonstrate using the largest, the 16 inch, because I need another one to go in my big mixing bowl that's in the dishwasher. So the steps are the same no matter which size you're making. However, the pattern that has all three sizes has templates that are all ready to go. You just cut them apart and tape them together and uh, you're ready to start making, right? And the awesome thing is these templates, once you cut them out and glue them together, you have them. You don't have to keep repeating the steps over and over. You're ready to go whenever you wanna make some more. So I'm gonna demonstrate using the large one, okay? What I'm gonna do is bring you right here because I'm going to prep this template with you so that you know uh, how to tape them together, right? It's pretty easy. 
but I thought since we're going through the motions, I would show you taping this large template together. Okay, here we are. Each one of the templates in the full pattern uh, have the size on them, right? And on the first page of each one of the templates, there's a little diagram that shows you the order of which uh, pieces, how the pieces are laid out to glue them together, right? But each one of the pages has a little dotted box. So, and it's gonna be upside down for you. Actually, <laughs> we'll do it like this so that it's easier for you to see. All we're gonna do is start uh, cutting out these boxes. Uh, and I like to leave a little bit of gluing room, like a little tab, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, don't worry, I'm using a rotary cutter, but this little tiny white one, this is for paper. <laughs> I know that's gonna uh, make a lot of people upset that I'm using a rotary cutter to cut my paper with, but this one is dedicated as a paper cutter, okay? <laughs> And actually, I do want to do it like this. I think you'll get, I think you'll get it, but it's easier for me to see since I'm gluing it together. Now you're just going to cut out three sides right on the line like this. And I like to leave a little bit of a gluing tab on one of the sides to glue that with, right? And then I just kind of line them up in the order that they're going to go. So this top row we can cut that off. And since there's a gluing tab on that side, I can cut this off. And I'm going to cut the bottom off. And then I'm going to leave a little gluing tab for the next section. So see that? I'm going to go ahead and just glue that together. There we go. This 16 inch is a fairly large template and we're just gluing it together just like this. So I'm gonna bring you along and you're gonna see me do it, but I'm gonna speed this part up just a little bit to save some time in today's video. So here is the top half of my pan protector, right? And you'll notice I did not put a little tab at the bottom to glue the second uh, half to it. So when we cut out the next three pieces, we're gonna make sure to leave a little tab for gluing the sections together. So there is my largest pan, prote pan protector template all glued together. And the good thing is this one is the most complicated. It's six different units to glue together, right? The smaller ones have less units to glue together. So I thought I would show you the most complicated one today. <laughs> this is as hard as it gets, right? And uh, yeah, so once you have it all glued together, all you're going to do is cut out this template right on the solid line all the way around. You just want to cut that shape out. Okay, so let me go do that and we'll be right back. All right, my template is all cut out. Now, whenever I want to make one of these, I don't have to go through those steps. I'm just going to save this template. <laughs> and uh, we're ready to start creating the layers for the base part of our pan protector. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have our batting, 
We're just using one layer of batting and you can see this is a really thin layer. This uh, is a warm and natural. We're gonna take the fabric we want to use for the back of our pan protector and we're gonna lay that down with the right side facing up. And we're gonna take the fabric that we want on the front side of our pan protector and we're gonna lay that with the right side facing down. So there's our three layers. Now, what's really fantastic is we're gonna cut a slit in this top fabric right in the middle. And we're gonna use that slit right there to turn this pan protector right side out after we're done uh, sewing it. So we're not gonna have any openings along the edge that we have to sew closed, right? So I'm gonna take a seam ripper. You can take a pair of scissors. Just gonna lift that top fabric up right in the middle. And I'm gonna cut just a little tiny slit, just a little opening like that. And we can make that larger when we need to flip this right side out. You just wanna make that opening right in the middle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin these layers in the four corners, okay? We wanna keep all of the batting and the fabrics in place as we're sewing. So I'm just gonna take some pins. I'm gonna do it in the four corners just to keep these pins out of the way as we're sewing. But it's just gonna help anchor everything together. Then I'm going to take my template and I'm going to turn it over and I'm just going to add a couple little swipes of some glue stick right on the back side. Don't worry, this will lift off when we're done and you'll see that when we get to that point. But this is just going to help keep that template in place as we're sewing. And we don't have any pins that are gonna be in our way as we're sewing along, right? So I just like to finger press that glue onto the fabric. And while that's setting up and drying for just a second, uh, I also picked this 16 inch template to show you. My biggest qualm with making these is the largest size template requires a big chunk of fabric, right? And I'm not one who likes to waste lots and lots of fabric. The shape of this pan protector is a little wonky, right? We have lots of open spaces here of big chunks of fabric that I know a lot of people are gonna see that and you're gonna think that's wasted fabric. <laughs> uh, if you're an applique quilter like I am, I love applique. Believe me, all of the pieces that get cut out of these sections will never be wasted if you're an applique quilter like myself. If you are making a set of these, right? If you're making the smaller one, these sections are super small. It's the larger one that you have the big sections of fabric that are gonna be left over when you're done. If you're making a set of these, and you want your set of pan protectors to sort of coordinate and go together, then these big sections could be used for the applique hexi on the smaller uh, pan protectors. So just keep that in mind. That would be a great use for the bigger chunks of fabric that you're gonna cut out of here. But if you're an applique quilter like me, you just see that this is opportunities to use this fabric in other smaller projects down the road. <laughs> okay, I think this is ready to go. I'm gonna bring this over to the sewing machine and all we're doing is a straight stitch all the way around this entire shape. At the beginning, I probably won't do a back stitch, but when I get all the way back around, I'm gonna pass where I started sewing and then I'll do a simple back stitch and cut the thread. So let's go sew this up together. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine. I've selected a straight stitch 
and my stitch length is 2.0. We're gonna give that a try and see if I need to adjust it to make it longer or smaller. Just know that because all of the edges are curvy, the shorter the stitch length, the more nice and even and pretty your curves are going to be, right? So let's start with a 2.0 and adjust from there. And really you can just pick a place and start. Okay, I am back to where I started. Here's my little string where we started. I'm just going to pass that, do a back stitch, and cut the thread. Okay, now we can come back over here. So there we are. Now, if you sew over the paper edge just a little bit, it's okay. I did that several times, <laughs> working my way around this shape. It's okay, the paper's still gonna lift off, right? Let me grab my little clips. I'm gonna clip this thread. And the paper, even with the glue, if you just run your finger over it, it should just lift right off. See that? So now we have this template to make more and more and more with. <laughs> so I'm just going to put that off to the side. And here is our shape. Now, unfortunately, I used a thread color that kind of blends right in. <laughs> but... If you do that and you flip it over, you can see the shape on the batting side. And at this point, we're gonna take a pair of scissors and we're gonna go through and cut away all of the extra batting and fabric, right? Leaving a really small seam allowance. Now, all these curvy shapes, you could use pinking shears if you wanted to do that, or you could leave a bigger seam allowance and then go around this entire shape and snip all of that seam allowance so these curves are nice and pretty when you flip this right side out. But I'm just going to use a really good pair of scissors. My mom got these uh, for me for Christmas and they cut all the way to the tip. They cut layers and layers and layers beautifully. So I'm going to just cut all this extra out leaving a very very small seam allowance and you'll see that uh, but that very small seam allowance will help give me nice pretty curves Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out But we're gonna fast forward this part
Okay, so there is my shape all cut out. And there's the top with the little opening, right? So here's all of my chunks that are left over. And um, for applique quilters, you're going to be like, jackpot. This is great little real estate for lots of applique. <laughs> I also wanted to say that uh, the 16 inch pan protector is fat quarter friendly, right? Usually a fat quarter is like 18 by 22, something like that, just thinking off the top of my head. So if you have found some inexpensive fat quarters, you know, sometimes Joann's will do fat quarters for 99 cents, two fat quarters, you could have the front and the back uh, for the large uh, pan protector. So that's nice, right? Let me grab a pair of scissors. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and make this slit a little bit larger so that we can pull everything right side out. While we're sewing, I like to keep that slit pretty small. If it's really big, you might get some shifting in your fabric, right? But at this point, because we know we're going to cover this with a hexi applique, I can go ahead and just make this turning slit a little bit bigger and make it a lot easier to turn this right side out. Now, if you have a pair of hemostats, that's going to be really helpful to turn all these curves to pull them right side out, uh, especially on the smallest one, right? The smallest one has a little bit of a skinnier little curvy parts to pull right side out. So a pair of hemostats would be really helpful. So here we go. I have my little hemostats here and we can just reach in. I'm gonna just grab that fabric and we're just gonna start turning this right side out. Ta -da! The largest one is the easiest one to turn. <laughs> there we go. We're gonna do this for all the little pokey parts. I have my heater on today because it is so cold. <laughs> it is freezing outside. I think this morning, well, it might not be as cold here as it is at some of y'all's house because we live in Virginia, <laughs> but it was 17 this morning. And I think that that is cold. We have a heat pump. Well, actually we have several different heat pumps because our house is in different zones, right? We have a heat pump for upstairs. We have a heat pump for downstairs. My parents have a heat pump. <laughs> um, so we have a couple of different units, but this morning I looked at the thermostat and the auxiliary heat was on and I was like, oh, that's going to kill our power bill. All right, so there are all of the pokey parts and it looks like a hot mess. Once you get them started though, if you reach in with like a chopstick or some kind of pokey tool, you can start just poking out all of these little arms of the pan protector. And as I'm doing that, I'm just running this uh, chopstick right along those seams, just pushing them out so that they're nice and smooth all the way around. All right, we're gonna go ahead and heat up our iron, which has gone to sleep. I'm gonna clear off this pressing board because once you get everything poked out nice and pretty, we're just gonna iron this flat, right? We're just gonna give everything a good little press. But before we do, I like to take a little bit of glue stick and just add a little bit of glue to these fabric flaps. <laughs> just to keep them down. See that? 
It's just going to help keep those little flaps nice and flat. So let's give this a press. And you'll see I'm going to use a little bit of steam, but you don't have to. Now there we go, it is nice and flat. So while that's cooling off, we're going to get started on the hexi appliques that cover up that opening and make it look more quilty like, right? So where is my heat and bond? I have some heat and bond light. You could use your favorite fusible, right? Mine is heat and bond light. I have strings everywhere. <laughs> In the free version, the smaller one, you'll see uh, one page that has two hexi shapes. One is the large hexi and one is the small hexi. If you have the full pattern, you're going to find, after all of the written instructions, <laughs> oh, that's the wrong one. So the free version, there is your hexi templates for your applique, right? After all of the written instructions. On the full version, to save paper, I put all of the hexes on one page. So when you first see this page, you're like, what in the world did she do? <laughs> that is all of the hexy shapes for each one of the pan protectors, right? And they're color coded. So the black lines, that's your small and large hexy for the center. Your green lines, which is this one and that one, are for your 13 inch, your medium size hexi. And the orange is for your 16 inch hexi. So there's your small hexi and your large hexi. So they're all on one page to save paper, right? But they are color coded depending on which size protector you're making. So today I'm tracing the orange line because we're doing the large uh, protector. Now I didn't include an SVG to cut these out because quite honestly, they're simple, just straight lines. And I think by the time you fuse this onto fabric, load the design in your Scan and Cut or your Cricut, load your fabric and get it all situated, it would just be faster to trace this out and to cut it by hand. And that's just my thinking since it's such a simple shape. <laughs> so all we're gonna do is on the paper side, right? We're just tracing this hexi which I had a little ruler somewhere because I have shaky hands all. So for me, it's just easier to just use a little ruler to get a straight line. <laughs> and you don't even have to be exact with the tracing, right? Because we're cutting this out. You could use a light pad if it helps you see the lines a little bit easier. The orange line, I just do see it through the uh, heat and bond. So there's my large hexi. and the smaller one. And once you have them traced, you can just separate these two shapes, but we're not gonna wanna cut them out directly on the line just yet, right? So,
just outside the line. And I even save all of these scraps of heat and bond <laughs> because you never know when you're going to need a little piece, right? And I have a little box right next to me that all of these pieces go into because, again, being an applique quilter, you're all the time using little pieces. So I will save all of that. So here's my two shapes. Let me grab the fabric that we're going to use for my hexes. And we'll come back to the pressing board. There we go. <laughs> I lost it for a second. So here's my two fabrics. And I think using the lighter one and then the darker one would be fantastic. So let's fuse the larger hexi onto the back side of this fabric. And let's put the smaller hexi on the back side of this fabric. And now we're just cutting these out right on the line this time, right? I could use, let's use my rotary cutter. <laughs> I think I can cut a straighter line. Uh, my rotary cutter for fabric is at my cutting mat. Um, I'm just gonna use these. Just know that these are my paper cutters, cutter. And uh, hopefully it's sharp enough to cut through the fabric and the paper. We shall see. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fine. See how fast that is? Even if I go off the line just a little tad bit, who's ever going to know? <laughs> There we go. So I think the straight line cutting and tracing is fairly simple. And y'all know I love to use my scan and cut. But for something like this, I think uh, it's pretty fast just cutting it out by hand. Now I'm just going to score the back side of this heat and bond so we can take the paper off. Now we're ready to fuse these hexes right into the center of our pan protector. So we'll bring that back. We're going to fuse the large one down first, right? And the way that I'll line it up is the little points of the hexi are pointed towards the arm of the protector. So see that? There should be a small little uh, area around equally around that hexi and I'm just eyeballing it kind of like that isn't that gonna be so pretty so let's fuse this one down so that's gonna permanently close up our shape right so we don't have any opening to close along the edges And then we can bring in the smaller hexi, and that's gonna just be centered. And for this one, I like to take two, the two pointy ends and just line them up 
just like that. And that's going to kind of put you right in the middle. See that? I had to change the cover of my pressing board because <laughs> I fused some heat and bond right to my pressing board fabric. So I had to recover it today. <laughs> That's okay. I kind of really like this gray fabric. It's a Marcus, I think it's Marcus Fabrics. It's like a vintage looking fabric. I love it. All right, we have fused our two hexes right to our pan protector. We're gonna let that cool off. And now you can pick a thread color that's going to either contrast the fabrics you've used or coordinate and blend right in to them, right? I'm just gonna use, I think I have like a tan colored fabric. So when I'm sewing, you might not be able to see it. It's just gonna sort of blend right in but it's sort of like a tan colored thread. And I think the easiest stitch to use would be a zigzag stitch, but you could use whatever stitch you want, right? All we're doing at this point is to sew the edges of our two hexes. That's not gonna only just permanently adhere the hexes to the pan protector. It's also gonna give it sort of a quilted look, right? And um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do now. And I think it's cooled off, cooled off enough that we can go over to the sewing machine. Now I'm just going to test a zigzag stitch. I just want a smaller zigzag stitch. Okay, I think that's gonna work great. So the stitch I'm using is 1.0 and the stitch length. And for the width, it's at 2.0. That's gonna give you a little bit of a smaller little zigzag stitch. It's also going through two layers of fabric and a thin layer of batting as well, plus the applique itself too. Uh, I don't think you're gonna actually see the stitch uh, because I think these colors are going to blend in. But come with me as I sew these two hexes down, and I like to start with the bigger one first. So here we are. Don't you just love these colors? This is gonna go so good in my uh, in my kitchen. I love it. I love these fabrics. Okay, so all I really have left to do is to trim these little threads where I started sewing, right? And then flip it over and trim the threads on the back. There we go. So you can kind of see on the back the threads and how our pan protector is now quilted too, right? <laughs> but isn't that just so pretty? So let's see this one in action. I'll take this one out. We're going to just fit it right down inside that bowl just like that. You can see on this particular mixing bowl, it has some edges that stick up, right? Because this 16 inch one is really designed for my biggest 
mixing bowl. <laughs> but I think it's kind of cute to have it sticking up over the edge, right? And so this just fits right down inside there. See that? Isn't that so cute? Listen. Don't you love it? The sound of silence. <laughs> I hope you give these a try and I hope you have fun and enjoy making them. Um, here's what I think. Um, I think these would make terrific housewarming presents, Christmas presents, birthday presents. Um, I think I, I will end up making several of them because I will not only use them for my bowls, but I'm also going to use them in my pans that are in a cabinet because currently those are stacked and I don't like to have anything in between them, right? So I will make some of these to actually use in my frying pans and protect them from sitting directly on the surface of one another too, right? So they're not just good for mixing bowls. They are pan protectors as well. But yeah, and I think, I don't know, but I kind of think that these would do really well in like a craft uh, booth, right? At different venues, um, farmer's markets and things like that. If you were to sell them, I think you need to have a demo, <laughs> like a set of little mixing bowls and have them in there and show them the benefits of using them. And I think that if they're like me and they love quiet, the little demo would sell them, wouldn't it? So if you have a crafting booth or an online shop where you sell your goods that you make, you might want to make some of these and see how they do. I don't know, but make some for yourself. Uh, I would love to hear from you down in the comments section. Let me know what you think about them. And if you make them, let me know how they work in your kitchen, right? Super cute, but very practical. That's what I'm about this year, I think. Cute and practical and useful. All right, everybody. I look forward to seeing you next week. Who knows what we're going to make? It's a year of randomness. And what did I call it? Let me think. Consistent and consistency. <laughs> Something like that. All right, everybody. I'll see you next week. Bye.